people in here, they've been inside from the start. They haven't had to survive. They just don't get it. They can't. The very thing that makes you different is what makes you special. Hmm, now I'm all warm and fuzzy inside. To fight for this city. To be the symbol of hope that the arrow never was. I am the Green Arrow. I'll do it too. <laughs> yeah, we do it in stereo. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome once again to the Fandom Zone podcast. Uh, I'm Charles Skaggs, and with me, of course, is my partner in crime, the Karen. Karen Lindsay. I was going to announce, I was, I was pausing for dramatic effect. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that. Karen, hello. Sure, why not? Hello, Karen. Hello. <laughs> or it could be like uh, David Tennant and as the Purple Man, Kilgrave. That's right. Hello, Karen. Karen. No. Oh, that creeps me out. You're in my ear holes. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Smile for me, Karen. No. <laughs> All right, so hello again, everybody, and uh, welcome to episode 45. Four five. Four of the five Fandom. of the Fandom Zone podcast. Yay. Um, once again, we have another huge week because we're right in the, in the thick of it. Uh, we're in, just about heading into February sweeps. Yep. But, you know, we're not quite. We're at the tail end of January still. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, what's the end last day of the week through... Oh, uh, the 6th of February. No. Through the 6th of February. Yeah. Well, no, that... Yes, that's right. Okay, never mind. It is right. So it is February. Okay. Right. It was through the 30th the last week. All right. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've, it's all right. I've been up since 5.45. Give me a break. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right. So this uh, this time we're going to talk about Supergirl, episode 12 of the first season. Bizarro. Bizarro. Uh, we're going to talk about Lucifer, the second episode. Lucifer, Stay. Good devil. I kind of like that title. Me too. Because if, if you're like a uh, Family Ties fan, mm -hmm. like I was back in the day, you get that reference. Sit, Ubu, sit. Yeah. Good, Good dog. dog. Ruff. Ruff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Flash, episode 12 of the second season, Fast Lane. Fast Lane. <laughs> Fast Lame? Is that? <laughs> mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, I Zombie. The uh, 11th episode of the second season, Fifty Shades of Grey Matter. Mm-hmm. And uh, boy, isn't it in that episode. Uh, <laughs> Agent Carter, episode four of the second season, Smoke and Mirrors. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arrow, episode 12 of the fourth season, Unchained. That's right. Which sounds like a uh, like like 90s metal band. Yeah, it does. Or, you know, like maybe 2000 era. Right. Unchained with like a backwards H. Yeah. Yes. Or something. Or no, it's like Unchained, like U N C H A Y N. -E. Oh, there you go. That's it. Or it's instead of ending with E D, it ends with just D. Oh, there you go. Like stained. Right. Yeah. You know, That's like it. it's Unchained. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if you name your band that, I want credit for that. That's right. And I will come to your house and I will eat your dog <laughs> because that is terrible. <laughs> we will find you and we will kill you. That's right. And, and uh, last but oh. certainly not least, Legends of Tomorrow, episode three of the first season, Blood Ties. That is correct. Okay. So shall we start with Supergirl? Let's start with Supergirl. Get right off the bat. Uh, Bizarro. Uh, Episode 12 of season one. Yep. Written by Roberto Aguirre Sacasa and Rachel Schuchert. 
who has done many, many episodes already this season. And uh, directed by John Showalter. Again, many episodes this season. Yes, yes. And I have my story titles. Okay. Which I will have for all the shows. Yes. Give us your little rundown. A story, A Clockwork Kryptonian, with the uh, conditioning there. Very Uh, nice. The B story is As Kara's World Turns, (laughs) with her soap opera life. Dun, dun, dun. And since those were the two main stories, there wasn't really a C story, but I did put the tag on. The C story is Mean Green Mother from Outer Space. Nice. So those are my three stories. So we need like a John Jones, like 70s, you know, exploitation film. <laughs> well, I was talking about the plant. Okay. Oh, oh. Episode. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about John, but no, no, you're talking about the Black Mercy. That's right. Which we will get into a little bit here. Right. All right. So, see, I was gonna say the mean black mother from outer space, but that <laughs> that might have been taken incorrectly. Yeah, you you was, want you want to play it safe on that one. It was actually a green plant there, so I'm I'm gonna play it real safe there. Okay. So which so remind me because my short term memory is always all screwed up. Sure. Uh, what, what's our story A plot? That would be the Bizarrette storyline. Okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, obviously we've got, um, picking up from the events, the cliffhanger from previous week, mm-hmm. we've got uh, uh, Bizarro, who we find out, uh, is a clone of Kara made from her DNA. Mm-hmm. And the DNA taken off of Red Tornado's arm. Apparently. Right. So obviously, yeah, that arm did play a point, uh, a plot point in the overall mythos. And uh, Mm -hmm. it gave Maxwell Lord the chance to be Lex Luthor and clone himself a bizarro. Exactly. And my title, A Clockwork Kryptonian, refers to when he was conditioning her with electrotherapy to hate Supergirl. And apparently, yeah, what he did, he took like a Jane Doe. He's taken taken a whole bunch of them apparently. Yes, several. And, them. <laughs> and this one just happened to work. Right. So he, and then he uh, gave her superpowers and somehow turned her physically. Right into in, Kara. Into in, yeah into a, a complete reproduction of Melissa Benoist. <laughs> right. Uh, off and on, apparently. Yeah, because uh, once she starts turning into Bizarro, then Hope Lauren. Steps mm-hmm. back in. Right. As and to, she, she was the one who was in the coma. Right. Her skin kind of cracks into yeah. that mirrory it turned, thing. Yeah, it turns white after, right. after uh, they zap her with kryptonite. And, of course, the big difference is that she doesn't have the morality no. that Kara has. So, But apparently she has, some, she has some morality. Some. But it's she doesn't come with that innate mm-hmm. morality. She... she I'm guessing some of it comes from the conditioning she gets from Max. Right. And because he's he's feeding her like, you know, you good, Supergirl bad. Right. Smash, Supergirl smash. So, you know, go out and save the city, but who cares what you do, really? Yeah. Uh, Because she was going out and saving the city, but she wasn't really saving the city. She was giving Supergirl a bad name. Yeah, the, the I get the impression from Max. He doesn't give a crap about the city. No, he doesn't. He, all he wants to do is make Supergirl look bad. Right. And try to turn. Now, I did like in, during the storyline I w- that they were started off with um, hinting that, oh, okay, uh, it's going to work and the city's going to turn against Supergirl. Right. But then it goes a completely unexpected direction when Kara herself steps in. Mm-hmm. And says, you know, like during a staff meeting with Cat and and the Catco crew, right? Um, in the where, bullpen, where she ends up like mumbling to herself, like you know, like well, maybe it's not Supergirl, maybe right. it's an imposter. And Cat goes, whoop, whoop. yeah, it's like, hey, I like that. Angle. Maybe it's not. Hmm. Let's go. No, let's go with that. You're like, so you think it's an imposter, eh? Right. And this, again, is going to plant a seed of doubt, I think, in Kat's mind. Yes. Uh, because now this opens up that, hey, if there can be a copy of Supergirl, mm-hmm. hmm, then Kara might could still be Supergirl. 
And then when, of course, when uh, there's like a, a throwdown as Supergirl's trying to uh, rescue this dangling train car, tram car, mm-hmm. um, you know, like there's two Supergirls. Somehow they get video footage of the fight. Right. I don't know who was filming this because the people inside well, the car, but I mean. On cell phone. Yeah, but I mean, but the footage that was airing was way, way outside the tram car. I know. Like it was that there would have to be a helicopter there or something. Well, might have been a, like a traffic copter. I don't know. But might have been. It's, it's you know. It's, it was silly. I know. They, they didn't establish a traffic copter. It's a knit so, to pick. So, yes. I know. It is. It is a knit. But uh, so, yeah, once this happens and there's like, oh, there's two Supergirls, then it's like, well, guess what? Max's imposter plan goes completely kablooey. Exactly. So I like the fact they went that unexpected route. That's right. Is my right. ultimate point. Exactly. And after all this stuff happens, she ends up um, cracking literally under the pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, they a, end meta- up, a metaphor, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> they end up getting her. Uh, Hope, Lauren, yeah. the actress, the bizarrette, the bizarro girl. Bizarro girl. Uh, they grab her and they end up also getting Maxwell Lord mm-hmm. and taking him into the DEO. Now, I don't know about you, yeah. but he was way too smug. Well, because he has to be because he's like, you know, Max Luther. Yeah, but I think he's got a contingency plan. I think... If something happens to him, mm-hmm. something else is going to happen outside. Oh, he's probably got a, like a team of lawyers ready to like expose the DEO and spring him or something. Right. Something pro- is going to happen. He was probably anticipating this. Right. Because right. he's goading everybody. But now he knows where the DEO is. He knows all yeah. their secrets. He's mm-hmm. down there now. He, yeah. you know, so he's unless a certain. Another- Unless a certain Martian manhunter uses wipes his telepathy and, and wipes the slate clean. But of course he won't do that because. <laughs> well, they better. Or yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll yeah. See what happens if they hit that reset button. Yeah. And then we have the, the next storyline, which is as Kara's world turns, mm-hmm. which would be her dating Adam. Adam Foster. Yeah. We get the introduction of Blake Jenner. Mm-hmm. Well, he was in the last episode, but this was his yeah. big episode. Now, as I understand it, uh, he's kind of related to Melissa Bates, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, they're married in real yeah. life. So, uh, obviously... They, like they, I think they had chemistry on screen. One would hope, considering they are married. Well, I didn't think they had it on Glee, so... Uh, <laughs> I think they had it here, though. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I thought they were cute together in this. And, of course... Seeing Cat mm-hmm. kind of, you know, pushing them together and happy to see them together was cute. Yeah. And she's like, you know, f- kind of like all the crappy treatment that she normally gives Kara. <laughs> she's just like, oh, you know, you know, like, you know, treating her really nice and like, oh, and like, you know, like giving her like more of her attention and right. valuing her opinion. Right. Bringing her coffee. Yeah, exactly. Stuff yeah. like that. And then, of course, it goes to complete about face. Oh, yeah. She when, doesn't want to even be friends with her. Yeah, she yeah. turns like that. Yeah. when. Uh, Although I have to say some of that is Adam's fault because when she decides to break it off with Adam, instead of just staying there for his mother, right? he decides to completely leave town, to blow town completely. Yeah. So, I well, mean, what a petulant little kid, right? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. He makes a comment. He, at least he, he tells Kat who told us that, oh, there's nothing else here for me. Right. How so, rude. So, well, maybe Pat, Kat's kind of pissed off about that. Well, I would be too. Right. But I wouldn't be pissed off at Kara. I'd well, be pissed so, off at Adam. But Kat is the type to, like, take out her frustrations on underlings. On whatever's closest, too. And that's Kara. Right, exactly. Especially so, especially since Kara broke it off with her son and dumped right. him. It's in character for Kat. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying it's it's kind of a crap move of Adam to make. I think yeah. Adam was the one to blame there, really. Well, and I also think Kara was because she's like, she panicked. Sure. And it's just, you know, instead of trying to work it out and see where it goes. Because, I mean, she hangs out. She crushes on Jimmy. She doesn't yeah, see. Jimmy him. knows who he is, who she is. My, I know, but she's yeah. still, she, you know, she's. 
acting like, oh, her presence around Adam puts him in danger. Right. But but so does all the, like, her co-workers, you know, Jimmy, everybody. when everybody she's in contact with. So right. I, so her reasoning is a little flawed, in my opinion. A lot flawed, yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think she justifies it as in those other people that she doesn't really hang with aren't in, in danger, and Jimmy and Wynn know who she is. Right. So they have that that security blanket of knowing who she is. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I didn't get it either. <laughs> Uh, and then there's that bro moment between Wynn and and James, mm-hmm. where James kind of bonds with him over the fact that James is kind of admitting that he feels something for her. And when Bizarro Girl takes James hostage, he yes. does completely admit to loving her. Right. He. he she, I love that. The, the, like she. She duct tapes him to a forklift. Right. <laughs> They try to kill me with a forklift. <laughs> that's a that's a mystery science theater. Reference. Very nice. Yeah. Very but, nice. Uh, um, yeah, and he he comps to it, but of course, you know, Jimmy is not the kind of person who would cheat. Mm-hmm. So that is completely out of bounds for now. But and he tries to smooth things over with Bizarro, um, and starts winning her over. Then all of a sudden, she sees that he's going for the signal watch. Right. And, and then she smashes, smashes it. it. Yeah. S- smash, smash, smash. And I thought it was a pretty decent fight scene between the two, between Supergirl and Bizarro Girl. It was. Yeah. You got the, you got, the, thankfully, you know, you got the, the staples with Bizarro that we haven't really seen before in various other Bizarros on live action. Because uh, they did one on Superboy. The opposite powers, the wind and the fire and the. Yeah. You got the flame breath. Right. And they mentioned ice vision, although it looked exactly like the heat vision, didn't it? It No, it was blue instead of red. Yeah, but hers so was, is, her heat vision is blue. so It, it was it, a different color. Or I, don't I don't know. It looked different. Yeah, or white. But the, they did it, battle. I mean, it was like one of their breath was winning and then the other breath would be winning. And, yeah. and I thought, again, they're doing better with the flight fights. Yeah, so, they're doing they're doing the like somersaults now. I see with where they have the wires on both sides and they can do like like uh, Cirque du Soleil backflips. Exactly, so, and yeah. I loved it when they would like hit each other and like one of them would fly out the window. I mean, that's it's very cool. Right. Uh, and even though she knew that she shouldn't really be beating up on Bizarro Girl, she mm-hmm. also knew that she could take it yeah. because she was this mirror image of her. So. And they did introduce blue kryptonite, which I was very happy about. They did. The bizarro kryptonite. That's right. And they manufactured it in this case. Yeah. So, uh, wait, how do we do it? Oh, we'll just reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. That's right. Oh, wait, where have I heard that before? Oh, mm. Mm. Next stop everywhere, the Doctor yeah. podcast. No. <laughs> and that's a, that's a bizarro thing, always. But it does have an effect on, on Supergirl as well. Right. We just... Haven't seen that. Uh, and then, of course, Mean Green Mother from Outer Space mm-hmm. is the going into next week's tag. Yes. Which is... Uh, yeah, we, we should probably... We'll, we'll tease this a little bit. It's called a Black Mercy. Yep. And um, it was in a little comic that I'm going to show Karen. Because <laughs> I just happen to have it. Of course you do. Oh, at least I did. I guess I put it up. No, it's all right. I thought I did. I had it here somewhere. But um, Superman Annual Number Eleven. That's right. Uh, for the it, it's a story called "For the Man Who Had Everything." And next week's episode is for the girl who had everything. Mm-hmm. And this was a story written by Alan Moore, drawn by Dave Gibbons, of who Watchmen. of Watchmen fame, exactly. And the Killing Joke. Mm-hmm. Well, that was Brian Ballin who did the artwork. Oh, okay. But Brian. Alan Moore wrote it. So. Oh, Alan Moore. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I, I had a bunch of things listed. This was uh, my Cougar's Comic Corner recommendation. Oh. Wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. I do a recommendation for people to read on the Supergirl podcast, and this was the comic I recommended for them to read in preparation yes. for this week. So Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how much they're going to adapt. Me because, too. That's because why. you're not going to have Wonder Woman. You're not going to have Batman and Robin. Mm-mm. 
so and you know it's obviously it's supergirl under the influence of black mercy versus superman right so it's kind of uh we'll see how it goes but uh, right. i'm looking forward to it if nothing else you know it's like this this is the first time anybody's adapted this story mm-hmm. to another so me- be, another medium so yeah it'll be pretty cool yeah we'll see it'll be like supergirl on acid Hopefully this doesn't give like Alan Moore another excuse to like, you know, like, uh, Too late. yeah, grumble and you know, yeah. cast cast his magic. <laughs> so what did you give this episode? I give this one eight and a half out of ten blue kryptonite bullets. I pew, gave pew, it pew 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 laser beams. I gave it eight surprisingly comfortable skirts. Mm-hmm. Yes, we got we found out why because uh, Jean. Uh, when he was like, you know, duping Supergirl and uh, mimicking yeah. her form, apparently he thought they were rather liberating. He enjoyed the skirt. Yep. Nice I found little, that quite amusing. Uh, an interesting little updraft, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you got to let them hang free. Yep. <laughs> so maybe she should, uh, Kari and Alex should get him a kilt or something. I don't know. I, I would assume that would yeah. be good for him. I don't know. But, uh, so yeah, there's that. Um, so we're going to move on to Lucifer. Lucifer, episode yeah. two of season one. Lucifer, stay, good devil, which he actually says in this hour-long episode. See, I missed that. Oh, he says know, it. I didn't know he actually said it. I yeah, know. he's leaning on the bar about okay. halfway through, and she's about to run off and, and uh, follow a lead. Okay. And she says, what, are you not coming? And he says, you're not going to tell me to <laughs> Lucifer, stay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah. It's, so that, it's very funny. That is, that is, that is funny. Uh, so this one was written by Joe Henderson, directed by Nathan Hope. Excellent. And uh, what's our A, C, B, and whatever those letters are. A, B, and C. First of all, I want to say a a big shout out again to Jeremy Davies, whom I love Mm -hmm. a thousand percent, who was guest starring in this episode. Uh, Of course, from Lost and Constantine and Justified. Uh, He should should have been like uh, reprising his Constantine character. (laughs) That would have been awesome, right? Yeah, that would have been great. Uh, He played Nick Hoffmeister or I forget what they called him, but they called him like a douche. Or something yeah. in the credits of IMDb. I'm not kidding. No, oh, really? It was slash douche or something. That's, that's like that. kind of funny. Yeah. Um, so my A story was shooting stars. Mm-hmm. My B story was, oh, the humanity. Mm-hmm. And my C story was Trixie wins the intranets. That was great. That was <laughs> yes, great. Yes, I agree. That was great. So shooting uh, stars, of course, would be the main plot yes. of the week. Yeah, there's a... There's a um... The, the procedural case of the week is um, this part of uh, this. There's a car crash that kills the son of a famous actor. Correct. And of course there it's in LA. So like the paparazzi are all, you know, taking yep. pictures like crazy. And, and uh, it's a mirror to mm-hmm. Chloe because she is the daughter of a famous actress. Right. And in the paparazzi's eye as well. So, yeah, and apparently one of the paparazzos uh, was from Chloe's past. Right, Jeremy Davies' character. Yes. yes. So um, that's a running thread through this whole yes. episode as well. Yeah. So they they um, Lucifer gets involved, of course, because he's following Chloe around. He's kind of mm-hmm. stalking her, really. Yeah. And. Uh, so he shows up and like mes- mesmerizes the guy from like this guy named Nick that uh, was uh, put in the police car. Nick uh, Hoffmeister. Yeah, Nick Hoffmeister. Yeah, which I love. Oh, so he pulls Nick from the car, um, but apparently he doesn't think that he's the murderer. No, and neither does Chloe. And by the way, Chloe was stalking him first. Right. Chloe goes to the bar. Yeah. And watches him because. She remembers seeing him get shot, but she's not quite sure. 
what's going on with him. And she cozies up to him and pretends like she's falling for his BS and feels around. No flak jacket. <laughs> Which she already did that in the pilot. So yeah. why would why would she try it again? I don't know. Like it's gonna suddenly work now. I don't know, but she's she's trying everything she can to figure out what's the deal with this guy. Yeah. So it it ends up that she is following him, but then all of a sudden she gets this case and off they go. Yeah. So yeah, they they come across this guy and mm-hmm. he is on the scene of this car crash where the kid died and it just happened to be because paparazzi was following him. Right. Now and then, and then it turns out though um, there's a second paparazzo involved named Josh. Right. Because there was marijuana in the car. Mm-hmm. And Nick wasn't high. Right. And Lucifer is just taking the joint out of the car and smoking sure. it, smoking it right in front of, the, of uh, Chloe's ex. Sure. Dan. Well, why not? Yeah. And so it's just, yeah. <laughs> and Chloe, Chloe's just like, get rid of that. What's the point of not using it? <laughs> I just added it on to mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He should have just said, well, in 10 years, it's going to be legal anyway. So right. what, are you, what are you worried about? Um, but uh, Except for the fact that it was yeah. evidence, but hey, whatever. <laughs> so um, there's uh, so they realize eventually, Chloe and Lucifer, uh, after in, investiga- investigating this, they find out that Josh... Uh, tends to set up trashy celebrity scenes. Mm -hmm. After they find a lot of his pictures. So Chloe goes back and visits Nick, who admits that the crash was staged and that he was in on it, although Mm -hmm. no one was supposed to die. Right. So it's it's almost like this little conspiracy going on with Nick and Josh. Right. And throughout this whole questioning process, Mm-hmm. Lucifer and Chloe are kind of playing tag. Mm-hmm. Lucifer gets there just a step ahead of Chloe and Chloe gets there and she's like, what were you doing here? So they're kind of, you know, ping ponging yes. from person to person, uh, which I find amusing because he just charms his way in to places. And she's like, okay, seriously, how did he get in here? Did I let him in again? <laughs> You know, the poor woman at the police desk is like, how did that happen? (laughs) She's just completely stymied. She doesn't know how she let the guy in again. (laughs) But yeah, she, she, everybody just lets him go in, of course, because he charms his way in. Exactly. Yeah. He's, he's got that great accent and, Mm -hmm. and they all fall for it. He sure does. See, it's this is like Sleepy Hollow. And then... <laughs> Rawr. Uh-huh. I hear that. That was a heavy sigh. It was. All there right. was a scene that was quite interesting as well. Which scene was that? The scene where he wakes up in uh, his bedroom. Yeah. And he has a friend staying over. Right. <laughs> and, and it's a male friend. Hmm. Because he doesn't care, really. Right. Well, you got to figure, way. yeah, he's, Lucifer's going to just be omnisexual. He's an equal opportunity. You know, men, women, demons, it's, sure. it's, it's all, it's all the same. It's, to- all, it's all fair game. Sure. Uh, therapists, as mm-hmm. in Dr. Linda. Twice. Yeah, twice. Yes. But um, I love the scene where he says, "Somehow I think you're getting the better end of the and she jumps right on top. Jumps him. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, I love the fact that they're playing her as this this completely like un- undersexed, you know, like desperate, like I gotta have this now. Horn dog. Cougar. Yeah, cougar. Yeah. Well, is it really a cougar with Lucifer, considering how old he is? Well, if she thinks he's human, which she does. Yeah, as far as she's yeah. concerned, she's cougaring. Right. But in but reality. No. No. In reality, no. No, yeah. no. And uh, while well, we're on the subject of Dr. Linda, she, uh, I guess, she thinks uh, that, you know, she, you know, Lucifer's talking about how he's worried that he's becoming too empathetic toward others. 
And Dr. Linda thinks that someone has caused him to change his ways. So, and that's kind of like a, a little B plot throughout this episode. Because uh, we got a Menadiel showing up again, uh, again asking uh, Lucifer to return to hell. Mm-hmm. So it's like, dude, I said no, just deal with it. Move right. on with, move on with your like angelic life here. Okay. Right. Why don't you take over? Yeah, and exactly. Men deal if, says, you if, know if you I love can't. it so much. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but he also points out that Lucifer's life is changing, but he says, <laughs> I'm not responsible for it. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, there's a hint of sinisterism in that. Mm-hmm. As in, if your life is changing, then there's a weakness there that I can exploit. Doesn't exactly. it seem a little bit like that to you? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I think he's just kind of amused that mm-hmm. this is happening. Mm-hmm. And he's going to, yeah, work it to his advantage. Right. And apparently they're brothers. Yeah, well, because, yeah, they're all part of the, uh, yeah, the higher yeah, they're angels. they're yeah. each other like brother, like yeah. real. Well, because they're, you know, like they're all like from God. All right. So they're, you know, they're yeah, you know, okay. like, because they all refer to God as father. Okay. So, yeah. I'm an but, Yeah. He's so rude. And I did a little research. Amenadiel was in the Lucifer comic. Oh, okay. Following cool. up on what we talked about last time. Okay. And, uh, but uh, uh, he's kind of a minor player. He's one of he, those names that I would skim over. Yeah, he kind of shows up every so often. but he's Because not. I wouldn't know how to pronounce it. I would just skim over it. But apparently he is in the comics, so that's probably what Okay, cool. Saying. Yeah. Um, now, someone else who is also noticing the change in Lucifer is Mazikeen. Yep. And this is my Oh, the Humanity storyline. Oh, well, that worked out really well. Mm-hmm. And, because uh, he is uh, caring a bit more for humanity than he should. And no one is enjoying that except for, uh, no, no one's enjoying it. (laughs) Not even Lucifer. Well, maybe the people who he helps out. Sure. But they don't know about it really. They don't know about it. No. 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 Um, no, Chloe might because he did save her life. He's helping her. Yeah. Yeah, So. uh, But she's suspicious. mm -hmm. Even. Even she is suspicious of it. Probably even more suspicious at the end of this episode. Right, exactly. Which we'll get into in a minute. I'm so puzzled about that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mazikeen slamming Lucifer for, like, developing f- feelings for Chloe. So mad. But that kind of, like, stokes the fires a little bit, and he gets all, like... Ragey. Jean Jones' eyes. Yeah. <laughs> He's super ragey. And then she's the angry red eyes. She's happy about that. Yeah. She kind of is like, oh, excellent. You're still in there. Finally. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, Maze and Lucifer end up working together to going back to the main A plot where they, uh, they want to punish Nick and Josh. Right. And Mazikeen puts a gun at, at, uh, like Nick's feet or each of their feet, I should say. Yeah. And then uh, Lucifer taunts both of them until try to get one of them to shoot the other. Right. Uh, Josh shoots his mentor, Nick, but there's no bullets in the gun. Right. Exactly. And then... Um, because Nick, ultimately Nick wasn't responsible for it, so he right. didn't want Nick to die. So Nick shoots at Josh, but then the bullet gets slowed through that timey-wimey amenadiel thing <laughs> yeah. that shows up. Yep. yep, and uh, Lucifer is like, pink, snatches the bullet right out of uh, mid air. Moves all around real quick. Yep, and whoops, Chloe notices it. Yes. Don't. Hey, weren't you over there like less than a second? Wait, what? 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 What, are you, tele- what are you a teleporter? What's up with that? What, what are you, you, the devil? What are you, Nightcrawler from X Men? <laughs> Did you bounce? Sorry. Did you bamf over there? Wrong. Yeah. Franchise. Wrong. <laughs> you know, Nightcrawler has a pointed tail too. So there the, you go. Oh, that's true. See that's what I did there? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, um, Lucifer snatches the bullet, then admits to a minute deal that, yeah, I'm changing. Deal with it. <laughs> yep. Finally. Yeah. So, and then he kicks Josh in the groin, which is kind of funny. I like that very much. Um, and then lastly in the C plot, Trixie, Trixie, 
Well, through this whole episode, mm -hmm. it's the mirror to the main plot that Chloe's hiding her past 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. In this, I guess she was like, um, 15 minutes fast of times. A, a boob fame. Right. Yeah. Like, it was like the boob shot in fast times. Right. Was her big thing. And like, she's like, been hiding like Phoebe, it. Like Phoebe, Phoebe Kate. Yeah. She's been hiding it from her daughter all this time. <clears throat> and so she decides finally that she's going to out herself before her daughter can find out. And so she, she gets out this horribly old DVD case. Yeah. The movie. And her daughter's like, I know already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, how do you, how did you find out? I have the internet. <laughs> the internet. You know, like I live in, you know, 2016. <laughs> That's what we do. It's what we do. It's a, so great. I'm a millennial. <laughs> and the kind of bond, she's she's younger than a millennial. That's true. Yeah, yeah. whatever the generation is going to be. Whatever she's going to be called. After yeah. millennial. Post millennial. And, uh, I love how they bond over the funny parts. Her daughter just doesn't care that she's naked in the movie at all. Yeah, she just thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Which is great. Bonds over it, that you, you vomited on this guy and then you think you're done and then... Bleh, he threw up on him again, <laughs> and they're laughing over it. So yep. funny. Yep. So cute. I love Trixie. She, she is a little scene stealer, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. And I love when um, when Lucifer comes over to the house, mm -hmm. and he's like, he just has no boundaries. He comes over to Chloe's house, and Trixie comes out, and she, he's looking for something to distract her, and he picks up the Barbie doll, right? Is this yours? Yeah, And she's like, yes, it's my Barbie, and she's a scientist, but then she's also a ninja. And he goes, right, fetch. <laughs> and he throws it. <laughs> like she's a dog. She just looks over there, and she goes, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. So cute. Oh, God, I love it. You're a sucker for it, aren't you? Oh, I love it. Yeah. I really love it. And they do have that, like Trixie and uh, Lucifer, seem to have really good chemistry together. They're so adorable. On screen, together. Tom Tom Ellis and uh, uh, whatever um, Trixie's the actress who plays young we'll actress. Just say Trixie. Played, Trixie, yeah. Yeah. And then lastly, uh, oh we, yeah, we get it now. I, I remember I told you last time that like, oh, you know that guy that we thought you'd never see again. You see him again. Yeah. And now you know why I said you see him again. Yeah, he's crazy. Yeah, he's apparently gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs after yeah. Lucifer did his little, like, devil whammy on him in the pilot. Yeah, well, so, yeah, he's this hitting is, his this is, this is Jimmy, by the way, the record right. producer guy that... The uh, guy who committed the murder in the last... Yeah, the guy, that, the guy that shot Chloe at the end of the pilot. So, here's... This is my question to you. Right. Lucifer punished him right okay and when he was doing so he he jammed his face into the wall mm -hmm. so he and went it, crazy because of the punishing whatever the punishing. Well, then yeah and then he revealed his demonic face in the reflection right like, mirror or so whatever. i think that's why he's going insane but then the offshoot of that is that he hits his head into the wall again well that could be like just to make things like try oh, he, go like, away well, no, that that way, if he talks about the devil, everybody's gonna think he's crazy because right. he, cause he hit his head. I don't think that has anything to do with the punishment <laughs> thing. I just think the punishment is what's making him crazy, right? Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's the whammy, the right. devil whammy. Yeah, but the the thing about him hitting his head against the wall until his head bleeds—that's creepy times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so, I think yeah. and, then, and then he just loses it. He's like, "Oh, he's the devil! He's the devil!" And they have to come in and sedate him. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. How and, and Chloe stands Chloe... back. She's like, "Okay." How long before Chloe believes a hundred percent? Oh, probably if at least uh, the season. You think the whole season? Maybe, maybe a little less. Depend. You know, it's hard to say. But it all depends on how fast they advance this storyline. But I would say quicker than that. That's just me. I don't know. Because I think they could string this out a little while. I think they could. And there'll be a running mystery. And then 
<clears throat> like Chloe's going to talk to like devil experts or whatever and to confirm and like yeah. maybe she'll well maybe she'll go to priests or whatever and you know maybe she'll yeah. maybe she'll go to Hell's Kitchen and meet up with Matt Murdock's priest but <laughs> oh wait Wrong he's, franchise. he's and he's in New York so I guess that's not going to work okay. well I'm just thinking they're already going really fast on this because she saw him pop from one side to another right saw him get shot. She sees this guy go insane. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking it's going to be within five more episodes. Mm, we'll that's see with me. You... No, that's, a, that's that's fair. We'll see if you're right. Okay. Okay. Um, so at least they're building a mythos. Mm-hmm. I like it. So that's good. So we'll see where it goes. I like that there's a big arc. and then Because yeah. the... I definitely prefer, like, I want some actual mythos arc as opposed to police procedural. Yes, me too. But, yeah, we don't need... And they they seem to be doing a nice balance. Yeah, hopefully they kind of build the arcs, like the mythos more, so it overtakes the plot. Mm-hmm. I love whenever that yeah. coin yeah. slows in the air, whenever something slows, I'm like, oh, goody. That's a, the t- I was like, oh, Amenadiel's coming, yay. 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 More snarkiness. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so uh, what would you get this one? Uh, I gave it eight and a half girly drinks. Because... <laughs> Uh, Mazikeen brings her over a drink that Lucifer said that she should bring Chloe. Remember? Mm, yes. Brings her that pink drink. Yeah. I guess what one, uh, eight out of ten time slowed bullets. Mm. You know, bullet time. That's right. <laughs> oh, like the Matrix? Like the Matrix, yeah. Very nice. I like that special effect you did just now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't even need a million dollar budget. That's very good. Very good. So, yeah, you should hire me, Hollywood. I like it. All right. Uh, the Flash uh, next. Yeah. Let's yeah. Get, let's okay, get. I'm done. <laughs> Just like that, because it's so fast. No, it's all right. All right. So, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll cover this because it might be a little too painful at times. No, it's okay. The Flash 212 Fast Lane. Yep. Directed by... Directed by Rachel Talalay, who okay. uh, you probably know where I'm going to go with this, um, is the director of the uh, last two um, season finales of Doctor Who. Oh, okay. She also directed Tank Girl. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, she's, she's you know, like, she's directed some Doctor Who, and now the she's... The directing was good. Yeah, she and now she's directing The Flash, which is... Here's the question. Who wrote it? Well, who wrote it was Kai Yu Wu and Joe Paracchio. Who wrote who, what? Uh, some other episodes. I could pull them up real quick. No, it's all right. Okay. But yeah, they wrote uh, Joe Paracchio is kind of a new writer this season, but Kai Yu Wu has been around since season one. All right. Writing episodes. But uh, this is obviously not our favorite episode. It's not Flash. my favorite. It's, like- yeah, it's not my favorite. But um, what's our A, B, and C? Okay, A story, Skin of Evil, mm-hmm. which you yeah, will get if you watch. Star Trek, the next Trek. generation. Yeah, I know where That's you're going right. with that. B story, All Your Speed Are Belong to Zoom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and C story, Hooked on a Feeling. Because ah, hooked on a feeling. Dun, Thank you. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. Wally says he's hooked on the speed. Yep. I just watched Guardians of the Galaxy over the weekend, so it's like... Oh, nice. So the blue Swede is like stuck in my head. And that's the only version that matters is the blue Swede version. Yep, there's Ronan, the accuser. That's right. Yep. No collector. What do you do? Yes, the collector's right here. All right, the collector too. She's got the collector and Ronan Funkos. That's right. Lest you, lest, you, lest you think that uh, we somehow managed to put away the toys for... No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. And I had both Green Arrow and Wonder Woman out earlier, so there's that too. Okay, so Skin of Evil. Skin of Evil. Which it's is a reference, which is monster. a very clever reference to um, episode 22. Like, this is where I can turn to comic book guy. This was episode 22 of the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation. Where, where Tasha Yar where died. Ta- where Tasha Yar is killed by Argus, the... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So you, so yeah. But the re- and the reason they killed her, 
killed off Tashiar is because Denise Crosby wanted to leave the show because she was getting crappy lines like "Hailing frequencies open," and mm-hmm. and in the '80s that didn't quite cut it as much as in the '60s. So she's like, "I'm out of here." That's right. But I will come back as my daughter in yesterday's right. prize. But that's or funny. herself, or herself from an in a parallel universe, parallel universe who's now Romulan and stuff. And right, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, anyway. So, um, so this tar, is obviously is yeah. tar man or tar tar pit. Tar pit, tar, pit. Is, tar pit is actually a Wally West bad guy. Okay. Um, so, and he was created by Jeff Johns and Scott Collins. He was okay, but I was like, okay, what, what does he matter to this plot line? Yeah, well, because, yeah, they open up with his origin, where he gets thrown, this guy, he's basically this goon named Joey Mantaglione, uh, gets thrown into a tar vat, and of course, it's just as the particle accelerator wave hits. Yeah, of course. Two, two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then he's like dormant for uh, two years, and then is like, oh, guess what, I'm here now, and now I can turn my body into molten tar and kill people. The only great part about that storyline mm-hmm. is when Cisco is looking stuff up on the computer and he says, who's the best hacker? And they went, Felicity Smoke <laughs> at the same time. And he's like, what? Yep. See, now I would have said Oracle, but you know, hey. <laughs> yeah. Bar- well, I, I, would, I thought it would have been hilarious if they would have just said Barbara Gordon. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Owned by Gotham. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, she's not even born yet on Gotham, so yeah. Got a ways to go for that. Right. Not You're, that yeah. not that but not that Barbara not Gordon. Not that Barbara. Well, no, there's no Barbara Gordon yet. There's Barbara Kane. Keen, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no. She never got married, but yeah. Right. Yep. Um so uh so Tarpit, um is essentially he's out looking for revenge, uh, the guys who killed him. Uh, so they use one of the guys that try to kill him as bait. And then they, uh, they take him down with freezing grenades after noticing that, uh, a fire hydrant cooled off tar pit during the first battle. And then they're like, okay, well, we just, let's try cooling him off because molten tar, you know, turns hard when you cool just, it. Duh. Because duh, right? So yeah, so they that's what they do, and they take out Tarpit, and uh, and we get Joe punching out more people, right? <laughs> As he punches them out, <laughs> which I thought was kind of hilarious. It's like Joe just comes in. Joe's whole purpose seems to be like, okay, uh, I'm gonna fight with Wally, and then I'm gonna go like punch people out or try to shoot them. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to. Argue with one of my three children yes. at some point in this episode. So I'm either going to have a fight with Wally, Barry, or Iris. But he rarely fights with Barry. But he has fought with Barry. He has, but they've had disagreements. But it hasn't been, I don't think it's been a full fight. Well, no, but I'm, you know, had yeah. a tiff with. Yeah, they've whatever. had tiffs, yeah. Okay. But, yeah. So he's going to have some sort of friction with one of his three kids. Right. Right. And there's going to be a fist fight, or he's going to get captured. Yeah. Period. Well, that's that's kind of what um, uh, what's his name does on Arrow, Detective Lance. Right? Or he's going to have a heart attack. <laughs> but Joe is much cooler than Quentin Lance. Okay. He's because I mean, he's like he gives all the great dad speeches, which Quentin doesn't. True. You know, plus and- he can sing. Right. If they ever do a karaoke, right. night, he can go sing. Cause he and, he's just, and he's just more inherently cooler. True. Than Quentin. Because Quentin's like boozing it up like crazy. Right on. <laughs> so, you know, like. Yeah. Joe, Joe's got his act together. Joe doesn't have any vices. Quentin's a complete mess. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And then made his daughter a mess. And yeah. Mm hmm. So. Daughters. Yeah, and then and then you know like ended up getting divorced from his wife and all this and and now he's gonna be in love with this woman who's gonna die. <laughs> so you say we'll see. We'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. Okay. I still, think, I still think he could die. 
but you know, yeah, he might. I don't know. I'm, so, I'm not saying it's for sure at all. Okay, That's just so my theory. So, what's our B plot? Uh, all your speed or belong to Zoom. Yes. Uh, Dirty okay. Harry. Are we gonna explain that reference? All your base yeah, belongs. Yeah, to are us? your base or belongs to us? Go ahead. I'll get. I'll let you do it's it. It's from a video game from the eighties. Mm-hmm. Is it from the eighties? I think so. And it was horribly translated from Japanese to English, yes. and horribly translated. Where one of the lines was, "All your base are belong to me or us or us." It's it's all your base us. are belong to us. Yeah, and it's so a, that became this huge, like, people kept saying it over and over, and now it's like this huge meme right? for, uh, you know, a video game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like if someone says something... It's like, well, it's like, video it's, game, like, it's, it's like if you pwn somebody. Right, exactly. They, All your base are belong to me. Uh, you know, you say, or over 9,000, or, yeah. you know, any of that stuff. So I did all your speed are belong to Zoom as a yeah it's all it's that. it's all video gamey that's right like me right story. up my alley that's why I let you explain it okay so I figured I'm, like, you know, you're the expert on the video games so. it's like Leroy Jenkins or overnight yes, thousand I, or see, I know the Le- I know the Leroy Jenkins meme mm-hmm because I, I have a friend named Tom that. It's like, okay, you got to watch this Leroy Jenkins video. It's funny. Year, years ago. It is funny. It is funny. Uh, so I've yeah. actually done that dungeon many times. So, yeah. Lot, so, watch Leroy Jenkins' video if you get yeah. a chance. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about. That room is We're talking. horrible. Yep. On out level. Not anymore. I can run in there and do whatever I want in there now. Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins. And then Lisa I'd Chicken. <laughs> right at the end. So great. And everybody's just like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> God and, damn. and they're like, damn it, Leroy. <laughs> if you ever want to know, uh, here we are. I'm going to do what this right up front. Segue that's happening right now? Yeah. Okay. If you ever want to know what it's like planning for a raid, mm-hmm. that is it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You'll sit outside, your your avatar will sit outside the instance, like just gathered outside the instance. And then you're all on this thing called a uh, ventrilo. Okay. And you have your headphones on and your mic. I'll have, I'll be sitting here just like this. Yeah. And I'll have, you know, all my fingers and everything all ready to go. I'll be sitting like this, all ready to go. And I'll be literally, I'll be like on my mount and I'll be like flying around in a circle, just listening to them talk to me right. and I'll talk back to them and they'll be going. So you coordinate your attack. Right. Okay, we're going to go in, and we're going to have the DPS back here, here, and here, and the people in group one, two, and three, and we're going to have group one on the blue spot, and group two on the red spot, and group three on the blue spot. (laughs) You know, we'll have everything all coordinated. And this dude, as soon as they had everything set up, this dude just went... Leroy Jenkins and he ran in and he aggroed every stupid thing in the room. It was a room full of these little dragons <laughs> that came out. If you walked over their eggs, they hundreds of them just came out of these eggs. And when they came out of the eggs, it killed everybody in the raid because they were all standing there. And what happens is when you're in a raid, things don't stop coming after you. You can't run away and they'll stop running. So everybody died. Everybody. (laughs) And that means you have to pay to repair all your stuff. Right. (laughs) And you have to res and you have to set everything back up again. (laughs) So that's why it was such a big deal. I I like Galaga. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Yeah, okay. But... Okay, in Galaga, you don't get pretty characters no. that look like my characters with all their pretty armor. I understand that. So you you have your advantages. I get it, but yeah, just this just seems like oh, this is too much effort. I just want to blow stuff up. See, that's the deal, though. It's effort and it's fun, and then when you get something at the end of it, you feel like you've done something, and it's really cool. And see, I'm too impatient. I gotta just like blow crap up. <laughs> I do that too. You can okay. solo too. Yeah, I know. All but, right. All right. So anyway, back to the what flash. Is this dark segue that's yeah, right. shut up, you. <laughs> we'll get to you in a minute, Blaine. Yeah, just shush. Yeah, okay. So all your speed are belong to Zoom. 
wait your turn. Person. All right. Uh, so yeah, where's it? So Dirty Harry. Yeah. And I call him Dirty Harry. This is Dirty Harry Wells, because Dirty Harry is all kinds of super shady. And uh, he's all, I mean, granted, okay, he's got something he's worried about, meaning his daughter, Jessie, who's in Zoom's clutches. Right. So he's trying to work out a way to get her released. So he makes this deal with Zoom, which we saw before, that uh, to capture the Flash's speed so that Zoom can go nom, 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 ah, uh, burp, and it's all good. I've got, you know lunchy munchies but uh so wells invents this little device and slips it into berries under his little chest insignia mm-hmm. without anybody knowing a little looks like a little little, camp- little, little vial yeah it's like this little like battery almost or something mm-hmm. that, and um so it ends up sucking like two percent of berry's speed and because of this, Barry is 2% slower. And so therefore, when there's like um, this whole uh, big fracas during the drag race, like while he's at a drag race and there's like Tar Pit shows up and there's mass chaos and the Flash is battling Tar Pit and there's like the spray of glass during the battle. Tar and glass living tar- together. Mass hysteria. Right. I knew where you are going. And then... There's this uh, chunk of glass that is speeding toward Iris. Now. Who is just standing right. there? Well, well, this now remember, we're going through Barry's, you know, speed time. So time is relative. For Barry, it's slowed down uh-huh. because he's so fast. Now, it could be just happening instantaneously because if you, the reason that this piece of glass, you're like, oh, it's not going to do anything. It's just a piece of glass. Well, What's glass in like a hurricane or a tornado? Yeah, it, it, it becomes that. a very dangerous weapon. So when speed is applied to an object, especially sharp one, it becomes like a missile and just cuts right through. Well, it was a big piece of glass. Yeah, so it so just I so could it, see that it right. would hurt her. It's not like she was just standing there going, "Okay, come on, glass, hit me, bring it, bring it." I agree, but from how far the car went, right? It looked like she might have had time to. Move Dodge a it. little bit, a little bit. Unless she was just distracted by the uh, the battle. I don't know. Okay, well, anyway. Yeah. Point is. Hand wave, hand wave. Point is, point is because Barry is now 2% slower, he's not fast enough to catch that glass and then shunk. It right. goes right into her boob. Oh, I mean her shoulder. Shoulder. <laughs> yeah. They explained it was her shoulder, but. If you notice where the thing hit, it's like right above her boob. It's like between her shoulder and her boob. Right. It wasn't quite her shoulder. It was like in that little meaty area right between there. It's right there. So, I mean, so it's not fatal by any means, but still. It would have hit bone. Yeah. Like breastbone. Yeah. 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 This little. Yeah. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. So obviously, you know, but. Pressing there. But basically, Iris could have been killed. Sure. And, and who's responsible? Dirty Harry. That's right. So that's why I call him Dirty Harry. Now, they find out what's mm-hmm. going on. Right. But Barry, of course, being the hero, mm-hmm. uh, when Harrison cops to it, yep. he gives him the benefit of the doubt. Yep. And he says, if you or I was in this place and we were protecting our family... We would do the same thing. Yes. So we're going to all band together and we're going to help him. Yes. Now this is, of course, after Joe punches him. Of course. Which is great. Which was just great because first he's, he's tried to shoot Wells because he, when when Harry, Dirty Harry first shows up on Earth Earth 1. Yeah, he tried to shoot him because he, he tried to shoot him because he thought it was like, oh, it's a reverse flash. One. Right. I don't care. Just let me shoot him. Right. And then then, uh, then he punches him out here. Right. Which I thought was hilarious. It's so, great. But uh, but yeah, but now, but, but now Wells did feel guilty here. Sure. And he couldn't deal with it. So he's like, okay, I. He comes clean. He comes clean finally. So what we're saying is in this episode that this Wells is actually the good Harrison Wells. 
Right. He's doing it for his daughter, but he right. can't do it. Yeah. Can't actually go through with it. No, I absolutely love that speech by Barry. I did too. I, I thought mean, it, it was, it, it just, if you, if you listen to this speech, um, it's exactly everything to love about Barry Allen. Mm-hmm. As a, I mean, from the comics, it's right there. Like, it's exactly like he would be in the comics. I agree. That, 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 okay, that he's the moral compass and he should always be the moral compass for everything. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, like Dirty Harry screwed me over, but, you know, we got to rescue his daughter. And so we got to stop Zoom. So right. we got to overlook that and move on. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and that was just awesome. It was a good speech. It was, and it was true. Right. Because they would have done the same thing. The only thing that was different about what he did and what they did yep. is that they are the heroes of their own story. Exactly. And so what's going to happen is they're going to go to Earth 2. Like, Wells is going to go back to Earth 2, but Barry and Cisco are going to go with him. Mm-hmm. And they're going to fight Zoom on that turf. Along with a couple of other people that they're going to meet there, which will... The bad next... Daniel Pennebaker. Yeah, she finally gets something to do. How she's got to be loving this. That I, I okay, hope so. Now I like I don't have to explain what like oh what's a black hole or whatever a singularity and yeah just like yeah they give her something good to chew on and hopefully that means Jay will have a good yeah we'll see. we'll see we'll see um, so what did so what you give this episode well wait we didn't do hooked on a feeling yet oh okay what's hooked on the Wally feeling? wants to race the race was all tangled up in the tar man storyline yeah 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 whatever uh and it He's really so all it reveals is that Wally is addicted to speed yeah well <laughs> he well he also made a comment though um he says that where's it here oh I had it I had it down um, that uh, it makes him feel closer to his mom or something like he, he was, he's happiest when he's racing. Yeah. And then just, it, it, yeah, it's something like that, that. He was hooked on it is yeah, what he, yeah. He said something like that. Yeah. So what I put is, so besides Wells fessing up mm-hmm. and Wally liking speed, this is a horrible episode for yes. me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, give it, Seven shards of car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what yeah. gave it. And once again, yeah, Wally West is like he's completely he's unlikable. Worst. Yeah, the worst. Yeah, this is the worst version of Wally West I've ever seen. I should not be hating this character, I right? And I do. I hate him. And I'm, you know, like <laughs> I'm dreading when he gets his speed if he doesn't lose the attitude. I I hate him with the. Heat yeah. of a thousand million suns. Now that's not going to say he's not going to change, but no, they but better right hurry now. up. They better hurry up and do it. He's the worst. Yes. So I give this one eight out of ten freezing grenades. I feel like saying to Iris, "Why are you even going to bat for him? Why are you wasting your time?" That's yeah. right. Let I the know. car do its yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> if he kills himself, great. Darwin Awards. Yeah. You get you get all the attention from Joe again. It's all that's great. right. Yeah. It's all good. Okay, so moving on. Two hundred four smoke and mirrors. Yeah, uh, written by Sue Chung, directed by David Platt. All righty. Yep. A story. Wonder Women. Wonder Women. East. Wonder Women. That's right. Yep. B story. Council of Crime instead of Council of Nine. Legion of Doom? Oh, wait, no, that's something else. Different thing. That that should have been the Super Friends effect. Yeah, oh, sorry. There we go. And the C story is of mice and Biogen instead of of mice and mice. Very clever. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, the other ones were bad, but that one was okay. Okay, so the story again. Wonder Woman, that's right. The the mirroring stories of Peggy and Atlas. Yeah, with this episode, the way it's structured is essentially the um, dual origins of both Peggy Carter and Whitney Frost. Correct. Or Agnes. Madam Madam Mask, or Agnes. Right. As they, but yeah. Now, what I like to call this actually is Hey Arrow. This is how you do a flashback. Right. 
Well, two really, two flashbacks. I know, but I'm the, saying, yeah, <laughs> learn so, from this. So really, um, we first uh, we start off with Agnes first in the 1920s in Broxton, Oklahoma, where Agnes is sitting there fixing a broken radio, and looks like she's actually pretty brilliant, mm-hmm. or at least in a technological way. Or you know, or electronic way. She's a, she's inventing devices, and then she applies for a science program at Oklahoma University, but of course gets rejected because she has a double X chromosome. Right. Her mom smacks her down. Yeah. And her mom says, "You better be sweet to right. this man who's coming over because he's our sugar daddy." Yeah. Basically, her mom is just like, "Okay, she's shacked up with this dude." who neither of them really like, but because he's got money and he's putting a roof over their head or whatever, she's kind of almost whoring herself out. Not kind of. Well, okay, essentially she's... Okay, yes, she's whoring herself out. Yes. Okay, I was trying to be delicate. Yeah. But anyway, and her daughter is like, I don't like the guy. And she's like, well, you have to be nice to him. I don't care. I don't like him. Right. Smile. Just smile. Yeah, yeah just... Yeah. Smile, Jessica. <laughs> yeah. So, um... You'd look so pretty if you smile. Yeah. yeah. So um, we catch up again with Agnes in like 14 years later. She travels to Hollywood. Uh, she gets approached by a talent agent promising to make her a star as long as she, she cha- just... changes her name. Yeah. And she'd look pretty if she just smiled. I mean, it's kind of a mirror yeah. from the beginning yeah. after they go through a couple more iterations of this. Right. Yeah. After she learns through her mother. Right. That there's no way to get ahead except for on your right. looks. And then, meanwhile, <laughs> in uh, 1940 England, Peggy Carter is engaged. Um, she receives this <gasps> offer to join the special operative operations executive. I wanted to kill these two men. Yep. Her brother and this other guy. Yeah. Right. Rude and ruder. Yeah. Apparently she's a, like she had some work uh, at Bletchley Park as a code breaker. And she keeps refusing the offer over and over. And then only when her brother gets killed in the war, she accepts the offer and then joins the SOE. Right. But, but, it, but it's cool because we actually get kind of like the origin of Peggy. And she's just like, oh, I, you know, I couldn't be an agent. I couldn't do all that. Yeah, but and, she wants to accept it. It's just the men in her life are always telling her, oh, but you wouldn't do that. Right. You need I'm to be married. Off. Yeah. Before she even, even has a chance to do anything. Right. About it. Right. And then I like the way that they juxtapose uh, poor helpless Peggy with like the, mo- the 1947 kicking butt Peggy. Yeah. They flash back and forth. Yeah. And the same way with Agnes slash, what's her name? Whitney. Whitney Frost. Whitney. Yeah. Right. They flash back and forth between those two. Right. So, yeah, it's it's really good. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a good little story. Um, and then, like, when we get back to the 1947, uh, Peggy and Jarvis, like, they start uh, investigating. They're trying to get more about the council. Mm-hmm. So is that our B and plot? The, yeah. Council of Crime. The Council of Crime. In the, what is it called? The whatever club? Oh, the Arena Club. Arena Club, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So they, so they kidnap this guy named Hunt in an attempt to learn more about the council. And they get names and number members of the council, locations of transcripts of their meetings. And Carter and, and Sousa, they, they start, like, preparing to this raid into the arena club. But then they're stopped by Vernon masters from that 70s show from that 70s and RoboCop. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, He took a sharp turn. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, um, and of course he's turning out to be quite the villain of this season. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously there's like a little, I mean, there's showing how deep this corruption is going. Yep. And Masters is like asking Peggy for a source. Uh, the Carter's, Peggy's like, the, she wants the source left anonymous. And then Vernon Masters brings up, well, you know, hey, you know, all those like commies in Hollywood. 
well, you know, mm -hmm. technically you're a foreign spy and uh, there could be just this tidal wave that could drown you and your friends. Yep. Unless you play. Welcome ball. to the blacklist. Yeah, pretty much. So Peggy's like, ah, oh, crap. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm guessing this is. Or where... being English, you would say, oh, bugger. Oh, bugger. <laughs> I'm assuming this is where her ghosty friend is going to come into play. I'm guessing so. I'm guessing so. And they try to, they're still trying to like make him human. Although uh, he's feeling this pull. Mm -hmm. From some weird. Yeah. Like it's like. Blacky holy place. Yeah. Don't go near the light. Don't, don't go, go toward near the, the dark. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, exactly. Yeah. And it just happens to coincide with whatever is going on with. Yeah. With the lady. Don't go into the light. I don't remember anything it's, but Agnes for her. Well, it's Polter, you know, the, from Poltergeist. Yes, I know. Okay, but. Yeah. I, I know, I'm talking about the. Oh, Agnes. Ever when, stuff when, just, call her, just call her Madam Mask. Okay, Madam Mask. Because she's going to be wearing a mask here soon. But she's not going to wear a mask. She's not? No, they said she's not going to wear a mask. Well, her face is cracking pretty severely now. At the end of this episode, and we'll get into this here. We, yeah. we might as well do it. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I guess to tie everything in, okay, they let Hunt escape, and they bug him. So he'll mm -hmm. go back uh, to, like, they find out what Chadwick and Frost are up to. Mm -hmm. So he goes back there. He threatens to go to the council and tell them what they're up to, and then Whitney grabs his throat <laughs> and raises her up and says, okay, tell me where the princess is. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> no, not quite. You're part of a rebel alliance and a traitor. <laughs> no. Okay. All right, maybe that's somebody else. No. All right, so, and then she, like, yeah, sucks him up. Yep. And the zero matter takes hold, and then suddenly the... Uh, that signal that was broadcasting from the bug suddenly it is like, psh, psh. yep, oh, it's, it's gone. gone. It's gone. What happened? Whoops. Well, it turns out Hunt gets absorbed, revealing Frost's abilities to uh, Chadwick. Mm hmm. And that crack that's been kind of slowly growing on her forehead has now run right down the side of her face. Yeah, it's huge. So it's going to get bigger. That's right. Has, so eventually she's going to have to wear a mask to cover it up, right? You would think. I would think. So all that talk, I think that she's not going to wear a mask. She's going to wear a mask. Yeah. Some kind of mask. Or she's just kind of get, like really combing all of her hair over it, which would be like. but Weird. Yeah. She's going to look <laughs> like Cousin It eventually with her. <laughs> from the Adams family. All right. So uh, anything else? Or is that pretty much it? Okay, so uh, what'd you give that one? I gave it eight acceptance letters. Nice. I give this one eight out of ten broken radios. I thought it was great in the flashbacks. Yes. A it, really effective way to show that. It was. Hello, Arrow. Watch this show, please. What? I said, oh, hello, it, Arrow. Yeah, watch exactly. this show, Rem please. Well, remember how you used to do flashbacks? Do that. Yeah. Do that, please. Season one and two. Just... Just yeah. a reminder, it's it's out on Blu-ray. You can you can watch them. Um, okay, I Zombie Christmas. <laughs> oh yeah, that's me wondering. Oh okay, I thought you were setting up for I Zombie. Oh no, uh, both. Yeah. So I Zombie two eleven, Fifty Shades of Grey Matter. I hate that they used Fifty Shades. Yeah, but but I get it. But they made a brain pun out of it. Yeah, I know. So it works. And it, it did play up the right. sex. The sex. Great manner. Yeah. And people know what it is. So. And the romance novel and all that. Yeah. Well, it's not romance. Okay, well, you know what I mean. It's erotica. Erotica, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're the, you're the expert in that field as well. It's erotica, trust I me. I defer to your expertise. There's no romance in that book. Okay, erotica. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. this romance is, is two people fall in love. I understand. This is written by... By Deirdre Mangan and directed by Marzi Almas. All right. Okay. And what's our A, B, and C? A story is Hem Locked Diaries. Mm hmm. B story is Lassie Go Home. Aw. Sob. Lassie. And C story is Silkwood STDs. 
<laughs> you which, like that? Which is a great uh, Peyton line. Mm-hmm. Later in the episode, we'll get into that. Okay, so the first one. Hemlocked Diaries, which is the main story, obviously. Yeah, yeah. This is main, um, so uh, this week's case of the week is this librarian <laughs> named Grace who gets, uh, who collapses at work. <laughs> yeah. Might as well just start it now. Well, yeah, this is going to be through the whole segment. Uh, she gets rushed <laughs> to the, se- the hospital. Oh, yeah, she's at the hospital. No, <laughs> no. And um, so uh, she ends up dying, of course. And the doctors can't figure out what caused her death. So they send the body to Ravi and Liv, of course, because, hey, it's their show. Mm-hmm. Of course. And, uh, and they discover that she was poisoned by something, a plant called water hemlock. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, um, Liv decides to munch on Grace's brain, which turns in... Turns out to be horny librarian brain. Right. Really horny. Yeah. <laughs> librarian brain. And it's a great brain. Mm-hmm. This isn't like the uh, sociopath brain by any no. means. This is this is a much more fun and enjoyable brain. Right. Um, so uh, the Liv and Clive go to uh, Grace's home. They discover that her husband Andy has been confined to a wheelchair Andy denies having any hemlock, reveals that his wife's first romance novel, erotica novel, uh, was due to be published. And the only enemy that Grace had was her co-worker, Muriel. Because just the name alone, Muriel, means she's going to be evil and bitchy. Gotta be bad. Right. Yeah. So it turns out Muriel strongly disapproved of Grace's erotic novel, but the upright position. Mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> about a flight attendant's mile-high escapades. Right. And uh, Muriel has them listen to the audio book. And this is the great moment of the show because who's narrating the audio book but Kristen Bell. Veronica Mars. Veronica Mars. It's Another Rob little... Thomas production. Exactly. So it was, was kind of cool they worked her in. Although I kind of, they, there was talk that Kristen Bell was going to do a cameo, but I thought it was going to be a little more substantive than a quick little audio book mm. thing. Do you know the little story that goes along with this? No, no. What's the little story? Well, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy she's married to. Dax Shepard? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Uh, He is filming on a movie right now, and she is visiting him on set every once in a while. Okay. So she had gotten her lines, and uh, it was on the phone from Rob. And so she was jotting them down really quickly. On, on a piece of paper, handwriting the notes. Mm-hmm. So she would jot them down, and then she would read them back into the phone, like record them into the phone, and then, you know, send them back to him. And she left one of these pieces of paper in his trailer yeah. on the set of this movie. And so Dax walks in, and he finds this note okay. sitting there, and it's erotica that she's reading. Yeah. And he can't figure out who would leave this handwritten erotica in his trailer. So he is going Veronica Mars on the set of his movie, trying to find out who <laughs> left <laughs> this erotica note there. That's hilarious. And it was written like U's and B's and twos, you know, right. shorthanded. Like text speak. Right. And so he's looking over everyone's shoulder, trying to figure out who writes like that. Mm-hmm. And finally he finally comes clean to Kristen and Kristen laughs and laughs and laughs. And she said, dude, that was me. Those are my lines. <laughs> I was reading for my role on I zombie. And That's they had a, a nice laugh over it. But. That's hilarious. I did not hear, I did not know that story. That's a, yeah. good, that's a great one. Cute. All right. So, uh, so it turns out eventually that what, Oh, uh, Andy did kill his wife. Yes. So, yeah. But he wanted to frame the librarian. Okay, that's what it was. So he yeah. photocopied the lines from the librarian's book and blah, 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 blah. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, uh, so what's next? Lassie, go home. Lassie, go home. Oh, yes. Well. Uh, cry over this one. Once again, our everybody's favorite train wreck, Major. Mm. Uh, Major... It turns out that, oh, guess what? Uh, things are closing in on Major rather quickly because Clive and Dale, uh, Dale Bazio, they start tracking the GPS of Minor, 
Major, <laughs> Major's dog, Major and Ravi's dog. Oh, no. And before they can find him, though, Major chugs this can of new and improved Max Rager. And this is pretty hilarious. He, he basically goes all like, um, you know, free running, you know, parkour and leaps over the car and ducks out. And he's like running off at super speed practically to get minor before they can connect the two. Mm -hmm. Um, But then in a completely douchebag moment, uh, major then abandons poor minor on a bus. Well, he figures at least least he didn't kill the dog. Right. He does the nice thing. He hopes that someone will. Yeah, but he could have left him at a shelter or something. He didn't have to, well, you know, it's just, He's afraid someone will finger him. But he took the but he took the collar. The chip the the signal thing was in the collar. Well, the tracking thing was in the collar. I know. So all he had to do was just take the collar off and get rid of the collar. I know. And he would have been fine. And we'd be able to keep minor. I know. It just makes me sad. <laughs> I'm going to miss that dog. That dog was so cute. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that eventually after the whole major thing is worked out that somehow the dog gets returned to Ravi and Ravi gets to keep the dog because Ravi was better at taking care of the dog anyway. I agree. So hopefully he gets, hopefully there's a Ravi minor reunion in the future. Yeah. But it's got to come at major's expense. I'm dead certain of it now. You're mad at Major, right? He didn't like that. I he's, just He's killed people. I know. And, you know, he's still going around scot-free. Killed yeah. innocent people, innocent zombie people. They were zombie people, though. I know, but still, it's not like there's a law that says, oh, guess what? This person's a zombie. You, I guess it's okay to kill them, right? I guess. Okay, he's breaking the law. Breaking the law, breaking, breaking the law. law. Lives covering for him. Um, so, uh, so, um, yeah, I was, I was a little teary at that part was, yeah. where he was saying goodbye to minor right. on the bus. And while we're on the subject of Clive and Dale, uh, they find out Blaine's identity. They sure do. And who his missing father is at least, you know, and they're all that like, his name's not John Doe for real. Yeah. Yeah. They bring him in. Uh, yeah. but then who strolls in, but Peyton, and drops awesome. the immunity bomb on them. That's right. But then, as they're walking out the door or whatever, Clive tells Peyton everything shady about Blaine. Uh huh. And just like keep that in mind uh, as you're freeing him. Yep. So now this is kind of running through her head. And of course, this is after. <laughs> Sorry, wrong clip. Yeah. This, of course, <laughs> this is after. Um, you know, Blaine, yeah, after Blaine and Peyton got it on. Yeah, they did this. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like, uh, Blaine has this um, little meeting with uh, Peyton and a nice bottle of booze and some A-plus flirting. Mm-hmm. And uh, a nice comfy couch all lead to the hookup. That's right. Do you think he did that on purpose? I mean, on purpose, purpose? I don't know. No, I, think, I, think, I think he's interested in her. Okay. I think he is interested in her. I think so too. And so I don't think it, he didn't I don't see, think he had an ulterior motive. I don't, th- I don't think there was an ulterior motive. I think it's just like, I want to get banged this hot chick. That's the ulterior motive. Yeah. But just nothing, digging on her. Yeah. Nothing as far as I know. Although, you know, she is a lawyer and, you know, so maybe he figures, well, you know, if it's not bad to have a lawyer as a girlfriend. In my pocket. In my pocket, exactly. That's right. So, yeah. So, maybe a little column A, maybe a little column B. (laughs) Okay, Archer. Yeah, exactly. Are we not not doing phrasing anymore? (laughs) Can we not add phrasing back into the mix? (laughs) I like that back into the mix one. That's my favorite one. All right. uh, What's the C plot? Silkwood STDs, we were already kind of moving into that yeah, one. Yeah, that's true, we were. Yeah, because uh, here's the, and here's the, the, how they kind of ended this episode. Um, Liv, after finding out that Blaine's on the loose, 
and that Peyton freed him. Uh, Liv proceeds to tell Peyton all the crap. And this mm-hmm. is on top of what Clive told her. That's right. So Liv gives, uh, gives, gives another independent confirmation of what a douchebag Blaine is. And all the things he's done to the people like that they love like oh turned live into a zombie uh murdered some homeless teenagers almost killed Liv's brother and so on and so on right and peyton is like oh crap i gotta take a silkwood shower right and now this is on top of the recent revelation that oh guess what um you know that zombie cure we were all hyped up about and but you know, according to Ravi, well, guess what? Um, New Hope died and Hope turned back and turned back into a zombie. Yeah. So, so, so what after, does this mean so, for Peyton? Exactly, because remember, you can become a zombie with sex. Right. And she had sex with Blaine. Right. So, so this she is... be, so she better hope that the he's still it's not transmittable in this current state. Otherwise that is a question mark. Otherwise there could be zombies everywhere. That's right. Major or major will be a zombie. Peyton will be a zombie. Liv will be a zombie. Blaine will be the only person that won't be a zombie at this point will be like Ravi. Ravi. And, and, and Clive. About, and that's it. Get Max Ray, Razor. Cause she had sex with major. Oh, that's true. Right. Good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her roommate will be. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, zombies everywhere, people. Yep. This could be a really interesting season finale. It surely could. So, uh, so what'd you give this one? I gave it, oh, I already moved down. Yep. Sorry. It's okay. Eight tickets to the gun show. Because we forgot that, uh, yeah, that Liv was all over that guy, yeah, the drug the dealer guy. guy. She yeah. had to turn. Drake. Yeah. 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 The, I thought that was funny. The gun show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eight tickets. I love she was like, that t shirt is all bulgy on him. <laughs> <laughs> and she had she asked Robbie to spank her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and then didn't she also make some comment about like that they were she had some Ravi and major fantasy or right. oh, were you two wrestling in here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And they said, uh, not that I know of. Yeah. Uh, we could, though. <laughs> so did you, how hard did you laugh at that little smell? Oh, I was laughing at all of her little things when she, whenever she would do the breathy talking like that. I laughed at all of those. They were Hooray very... for sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Ravi would never do that. No, of course not. Yeah, it was hilarious. And the one thing I do kind of like is that she's befriending that drug dealer guy. Drake. Yeah. Yeah. Because I do think he's a decent person. Yeah, I think he's just big and dumb and stupid. And yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's in on Blaine's. No, no. Blaine's. I think it, I think she's just he serves a need. Yeah. Although Liv is like going, well, you know, we're gonna let's wait and hold off, and if you know if it's real. Right. It's, no, let, me, I, let me get off let me get off this brain first i don't, yeah. I don't mean befriend befriend oh okay, okay okay i mean that he's asking if they can if he can get brains there if okay. he can get off the blaine track Got it. and all that if 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 they keep him mm-hmm. in their pocket they could get the tainted max rager before blaine does right okay moving on to arrow unchained <sighs> can i stab myself in the head <sighs> Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's cool. Written by Speedweed and Beth Schwartz. Speedweed. Speedweed. Uh, directed by Kevin Fair. Okay. And this is essentially like, okay, let's bring back all the characters, supporting characters in Arrow, and see what they've been up to. Right. <laughs> Episode. Exactly. Okay, what's our uh, A, B, and C? A story. Calculator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. B story, Roy and his shadow. <laughs> Should that be Oliver and his shadow? Well, I put the two guest stars in there. Okay, okay, I see what you did there. And then C story is presenting a little smoke. Oh, okay. That one was horrible, I know. Yeah. Sorry. I can't be good on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so uh, 
a plot, Q a later. Plot, Cal Q later. Yeah. Um, so we get the introduction of Tom Amandes as the calculator. I love him, by the way. Yeah. Did you ever watch From the Earth to the Moon? No. I know, <gasps> I know of it. Oh, you need to watch it. But I, I haven't watched it yet. You have to watch it. Yeah. That's the Tom Hanks thing, right? Yes. Okay, okay. I know he plays talking. a scientist that trains the scientist who goes on the moon mission. Right. And he is amazing. Okay. Uh, so every time I see him on something, right. I jump right at it. He's great. So here he plays the calculator, who is this really obscure Adam bad guy. Yeah. Um, so I kept waiting for Ray Palmer to show up. I know, me but, too. But um, but he had kind of a recent reinvention in Birds of Prey as the, kind of like the opposite of Barbara Gordon's Oracle. So, okay. And this is the calculator that they're kind of using here Welcome as, as Felicity's Batman. opposite number. What? Welcome to Batman. Yeah, yeah. It's another lifting from Batman's world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, we get, there's like uh, this burglar, real, real quick, because I know you want to just get through this one. Yes. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's this burglar, and Oliver and Thea manage to quarter the burglar who escapes, and Thea loses consciousness during this and almost falls off a building. Um, but it turns out this burglar is, in fact, Roy Harper, Colton Haynes right. returning, just to remind us that, he was hey, he was Arsenal. Month. Yeah, exactly. It's sweeps month. Exactly. <laughs> you're just you're stealing my review. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, but uh, so, so I'm sorry. It's what? Grade. What? It's your grade. I know. <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. It's it's good school. Uh, <laughs> so so anyway, so Oliver stops the guy, stops the burglar. It turns out to be Roy. Oliver's just like, what? And then all of a sudden, Roy punches him, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Because it's always fun. And then he runs off. Right. <laughs> um, turns and out... He notices that his eyes aren't blue. Yeah. Turns out that the cal uh, the calculator has put the whammy on Roy. And, um, and the calculator uh, is this guy, you know, he's, he's basically the anti-Felicity. Right. The the He's under the, the underwatch. Right. <laughs> to her overwatch. And he's he's blackmailing Roy. Yeah, pretty much. He's underwatch he's, and overwatch. Yeah, so he's he's got the influence. Um <laughs> and, it and it turns out, and this is this is where it gets really uh, frustrating. Yeah. Um, because the calculator it turns out wants to blows up blow up the interwebs right which makes no sense because that's where he lives right on the interwebs right but yet he wants to he's got an interwebs bomb right and so he wants to he wants to a halt to the city this web nuke so uh felicity eventually finds out that the calculator is installing this web nuke at flint hills data farm and right. he's got a bunch of mercenaries there to, to make it happen because God forbid he gets his hands dirty. Right. So um, Felicity comes up with the bright idea that, okay, let's just blow the place up and remove this device that the calculator put in. But Except that would also do the same thing. Yeah, kind of. And uh, this, servers yeah. that they need in order to. <laughs> well, supposedly this web nuke will launch a virus or something, I'm guessing, that will... Yeah, to go to other it, servers. To go to but other it, servers. It would still take, hamper... It, take down those servers. Right. Yeah. It would still be a big detriment to the so, city. So, calculator's jamming the remote signal for the charge. So, of course, Arsenal's like, okay, I'll stay behind and blow up uh, the, it, the data now, farm. Can I just say... Anytime they do a storyline that has this much to do with yeah. interconnectivity, mm -hmm. it makes me cringe because yeah. they just, well, they don't think it through enough. What made me cringe when this episode was the, like, oh, we're the hacker smack going back and forth between Felicity and Calculator. Right. Like, I pwned you. Yes. You know, that, that hip lingo the kids are using these days. They're not. They are not. 
And yeah. so it's just, it was embarrassing. as hell. It's just like someone who's in their fifties. Right. Right. Not writing, that, but trying to write an episode about characters in their twenties using. If hands. someone was hacking yeah. and I was hacking against them, mm-hmm. I wouldn't like pull my mic down and connect to them and start talking to them. Right. I would just be hacking. Yeah. Period. Right. There would be no talking involved. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there would be no conversing, no smack talk. Yeah. So what's her B plot? Uh, B plot, Roy in his shadow. So Roy showed up yeah. as the guest star, and then Shadow shows up on the island. And there's all kinds of guest stars. There, there's, uh, we get to finally, we get to see Rila Fukushima return as Katana, which is mm-hmm. great, but she's like on, on screen for like all 30 seconds. Right. And I'm just like, ah. And then we get the return of Nissa. Right. Who escapes from Nanda Parbat. With stuff that's inside of a Yeah, there's like a small pepper. blade small blade hidden inside a long pepper thing. Right. And uh from one of her loyal yeah, followers. Yeah, exactly. So and she basically shows up at the end of the episode saying, Oh, I know Thea's comatose in the hospital, and then Nissa shows up and says, Oh, by the way, I've got an antidote. Right. But if you want the antidote, then you need to kill Malcolm Merlin. Right. Dun, dun, dun. So how come you didn't use that when Sarah yeah. was suffering? Good question. Cool. But right. you know, then we wouldn't have the drama on Legends of Tomorrow, which we'll get into in a minute. Right. So And then Shadow and is Shadow real or not? Uh well, they k- apparently killed Baron Ryder, Baron Blitzkrieg. I know. And the, his hired goons, so I guess. Or was that was... in his mind? Well, I gotta think Shadow's still alive, but well, was it Shadow's twin sister? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Does it really matter anymore? I don't give a rip about that storyline. I don't. I don't either. So. <laughs> and is that chick with him? I can't remember. Ta- Tatiana. Yeah, Tatiana or whatever. Yeah, I don't. Um, is yeah. she gonna be pregnant? I don't know. Because her mirror in the comics. Well, she, and, well, you know, and she like Oliver killed her brother. Right. And then she admit he admits it finally in this episode. And, right. And whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, so what's her C plot? Uh, presenting a little smoke. Her presenting mm-hmm. to the board. Right. She now can't they, get around on her Yeah, there's this Palmer Tech presentation and the one of the of course corporate bigwigs is giving her crap because she's paralyzed. Right. Like, oh, you're a presentation. Yeah, you're not going to do a good presentation because you're in a wheelchair. Right. So I have to say right now. So then we can we root root for Felicity because, you know, that it's going to be she's handy capable and she's going to overcome. If you cannot move around a few little things in the front of a room in order to make a presentation, Mm -hmm. there is something seriously wrong with your company. Yeah. (laughs) Because. Essentially, it's just she's a little clumsy, and then she turns over a, yeah. a display thing. Right, right. And yeah. then all of a sudden, at the end of the episode, she is the dexterous of dexterity. Oh, yeah. She's just zipping around the lab and you know, with Curtis and everything. It's all As good. someone who has used a wheelchair in the past, right? there is absolutely nothing to it. Yeah. It is not that big a deal. Well. <laughs> you do not knock over stuff <laughs> in a wheelchair. <laughs> So, uh, so they present, Felicity presents what's called the power cell. We spent right. a lot of time coming up with that name, um, Woo-hoo. which can like soup up energy, like powers a building power. It's powering Palmer technologies and all this. Right. So, so that's which their I'm big, sure will come into play later on. That's it. Yeah. Especially when Damien Dark gets a hold of it. The big revelation at the end. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. two. Oh yeah. There's two. Okay. One. Oliver meets up with his rival. Right. And it happens to be Damien Dark's wife. Right. Running. Because, she, yeah, Ruve Adams, which is a weird name. Uh, well, do Donna's wife in real life's name is Ruve? What? Damien Dark? I don't know. Is it? Yes. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it is. Okay. And then the second yeah. thing is... <laughs> yeah. the calculator is, is the city's, city's dad. dad yeah she 
because as Oliver's congratulating Felicity, and he leaves, he's like, I'm out of here. Then all of a sudden, she turns, or wheels. Yeah. What pivots. Is, pivots, that's a good word. Pivot. She pivots yeah. and it's sees, pivots. like, oh, hi, Dad. And, of course, it's a calculator. Oh, my God. This is where I get all my hacking skills. <laughs> Overly dramatic. Yeah. Yes. I inherited my hacking okay. skills from my dad, who's a super villain. Yes, that's right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Not even a really yeah. good one. This was a horrible episode. You gave it a high score. I, I gave it a high score because I like seeing all the guest stars. Okay. And I figured it was sweet, so I was like, okay, I'll have to be generous. And, they, <laughs> and there was a Constantine mention, so I got, I like it. All right. I gave it a half point for just for the Constantine You mention. have a soft spot there for so, Maddie. So, yeah. I was a little, probably a little far too generous than I should have been. It's maybe, all right. Maybe I'll downgrade that to an eight. All right. I'll downgrade. I'll downgrade. I, I gave it a seven and a half clumsy overwatchers. You kind of talked me into it. I, I'm downgrading to an eight. <laughs> it's terrible. But I gave it eight out of ten uh, guest stars for February sweeps. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay if that's what you gave it, for, nope. you know, for the guest stars. I mean, it was nice to see Roy back again. I just I, I was like excited him. because, like, oh, it's Katana's back, and then they'll yeah. probably, they'll probably then, kill her off because she's in Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I kept waiting for her to get killed off right there. But uh, not yet. I'm sure it's no. coming. I'm sure it's coming. Uh, exactly. Last one. Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow. Blood Size. Written by Mark Guggenheim and Chris Fedick. Directed by Dermot Downs. Yep. Showrunner ease. Yep. Okay. A story. Where hath Carter gone? <laughs> I know. I see what you did there. Hath set. Hath set. Yes. I know. This one is really terrible. I'm warning you right up front. Fanatomic Voyage. Hmm. As in Fantastic Voyage, but okay. Adam. And yeah, fan. I said it's terrible right up front. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> okay, and then the sea story should, is... Should have been a great, like, Ray-tastic voyage. Why couldn't you be here when I wrote this? You're, yeah, you're yours welcome. is better. You're welcome. Yours is better. And the sea story is Snart is Green with Envy. Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm the Hath set yes. A plot. Uh, we open up in ancient Egypt, and this is where things get a little timey wimey. Very timey wimey. Um, we open up in ancient Egypt where Rip Hunter tries to kill Vandal Savage, Hath set. When are we going to. But fails. See- when are we going to see the end of his lies? Of Rips? Yeah, this is yeah. this is another thing that he's lied to them about. Well, he always does that. The rule one, Rip Hunter. Oh, I mean the doctor. Oh, wait, uh, <laughs> Doctor lies. So yeah. <laughs> rule one, Rip Hunter lies. He tried and failed, and he hesitated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fails in this. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, Rip, well, Sarah tells Rip she knows that he doesn't have a plan to take out Vandal Savage. Mm-hmm. Um. So she calls him out on his crap. She does call him out on his crap. And I'm starting to get the, because of this episode, I'm starting to wonder if they're going to, like, if we should start shipping. Sarah and Rip. Sarah and Rip. Mm-hmm. I got that feeling should we call that Should we call that Sip? Rara? I don't know. I don't know. Hunter Lance? Lance Hunter? Oh, wait. That's Hunter? A- Lance Han- Hunter. That's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. We'll have to work on that. We need, yeah, a, we need, a, good, we need a good shipping name for that. But yeah. uh, Canary Master? I don't know. I don't know. I'm working. Canary Master? <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing this person like... Yeah, I know, I know. I know. Okay, we got to work on that. But... Um, so Sarah says that the, uh, there's another way to stop Vandal Savage, and that's to take away his money. Mm-hmm. So, of course, Gideon, helpful plot device Gideon, reveals that the bank where Savage is keeping his bread. That's right. So um, they kind of stage this little like heist type thing. I loved this scene where they walked into the right. bank. And well, it was well, well, I, like... should, I should put it on it before that, though. Captain Cold and Heatwave wanted to come along. Oh. Yeah. And then Rip said, no, 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 that's not happening. 
No. No bank for you. Yeah. So, um, so oh. Rip and here I'd enter the, the, what's called the Brumberg. And it was like that. Down, down, down. Yeah. Just, no, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the Isley yeah. brothers doing, uh, fight the power. Oh, okay. Good. So, yeah. So it's that Ow! cool, great seventies funk classic. Yeah. Um, and they're just strolling in looking all cool and they using rare gold doubloons, which of course Rip probably got from like a pirate ship back in the, you know, 1600s or whatever. From the original pirate ship. Yeah, pretty much. Right. So, he's, he, yeah, he's probably got a whole stash of that. So he's like, sure. um, money, whatever. Um, so, but they end up getting made. And then in the process of these, like, they're going to have to fight some ninja bankers. And, uh, well, Sarah realizes they got made. Yeah, Sarah. And in the process, yep. we get to see Rip working with, like, a Commodore 64 <laughs> with a big CRT screen. Yeah, yeah. And he's typing away, like, I'm going to get these, you know, it, funds or whatever. It's in Europe, so it may be an Amiga. That's right. It could be. They used Amigas back yes, then. Yes, they did. Okay. So, um, but Sarah's bloodlust ends up getting the best of her. Mm -hmm. And she almost murders this banker before Rip has to pull her, pull her off of the guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, they end up taking the guy back and interrogating him. And then the banker ends up recognizing Rip from this legend that Savage's order uh, has passed down. That's right. That Rip has apparently tried to kill Savage before, right after he gained his immortality. Right. Which, and he outs him to Sarah. Yes. He does. And he tries to hide it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, shh, shh, shh. But apparently she's not too bothered by it. Because no, she doesn't care. They end up like, because uh, Sarah's has her own secrets. Sure. So she probably, that's probably maybe that why they're getting along, is mm -hmm. they're both both very secretive people. Uh, Rip and Sarah, uh, they end up the, infiltrating this party, and they dance, and Sarah's scoping out the room and everything, being all cool. Uh, Rip ends up telling Sarah that she's not a monster, and she's better than the bloodlust that's uh inside her mm -hmm. so there's already seems to be this like he seems to care for her already right off the bat cue the violins yeah exactly uh sarah ends up fighting some mercenaries finds carter's body atop this altar mm -hmm. i like them when they stumble into the back room all drunk and then they end yeah, up yeah yeah they're like ah ha ha it's all ruse and, and then, then they, they attack the bar kick the kick everybody's ass yeah yeah that's I love good that. But obviously, yeah. they, obviously, they make a great team. They do. So uh, they end up getting captured, though, and led into this occult ceremony with Vandal Savage, of course. And they're going to drink Carter's blood. Carter's blood. Ugh. Yeah, apparently it gives uh, Savage does this whole expository exp uh, spiel that Carter's blood gives users longer life. And then, of course... Like they're everybody's all drinking the blood, and then all of a sudden, Captain Cold, Heat Wave, and Firestorm show up, break up the logging. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. Vandal Savage is like hugely mo syndrome would say, dude, too much <laughs> monologuing. Right. Uh, Heat Wave grabs Carter's body, rip stabs Vandal Savage, but then ends up giving him information that Vandal Savage is going to use to kill his wife and son in the future. Right. Again, this we mentioned this on last week's podcast. With the but, Flash and, and right. Reverse Flash, yeah. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Not only does he see in the pocket watch, he sees a picture of his wife and child. Now he knows his name. Right. The name of his wife and child. Yes. So he's actually giving him the instructions. And tells Rip is like, I'm going to take such pleasure in killing your wife and kid. It's going to be awesome. And, and this is almost where Rip realizes, I have just sealed my own fate. Yes. Right. Unless he, he unless he changes the timeline, time can be rewritten. But he just did it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean. Well, I can rewrite it again, I guess. Maybe, yeah. hopefully time has an eraser. <laughs> scrub, scrub, or white scrub, out. Or white out. Yeah, let me use like little like, strippy things or something. Yeah. But uh, so, um, B-plot. Uh, Ray Tastic Voyage is that what we're yeah, calling Ray, it? Ray Tastic Voyage, yeah, Thanks. yeah, because uh, we Kendra has this uh condition of being stabbed 
from last yeah. time. Yeah. And it turns out there's some knife fragments floating around in there. Right. Because it's a really old knife. So yeah. little pieces of it. Yeah, little chunks are, are heading toward her heart. Right. By the way, mm -hmm. can I just ask you this before we move on to this pulp? Right? Yeah. The knife, uh, the dude had it there, right? right? Vandal Savage had the knife there. Right. When he was incapacitated, why didn't they take the knife? That's a good question. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's not just me then? What? So it's not just me, right? No, it's not just you. Okay, good. No, no, no. So <laughs> so real quick, um, so Ray and Professor Stein team up. Uh-huh. Uh, Professor Stein tells Ray, oh, yeah, I remembered you from college. So that apparently gives Ray the confidence to go back inside Kendra and blow up all the fragments. Right. So he but does then that. He really doesn't remember. Yeah, he doesn't. He just said, I just totally lied just to so right. you would get off your ass and do it. Right. Yeah. And there's so many problems with the storyline. First of all, yep. uh, what business is it of yours who I lost? So stop asking me questions, mm -hmm. old man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, because Stein kind of grills Ray about his dead fiance. Right. And uh, how do you shrink air molecules so that I can breathe them? Well, bye. There's like a there's like a aura, or, you know, somewhere a field. And then when I come out mm -hmm. of her bloodstream, where is all the blood and gunk yep. on my suit? Right. Where is it? Exactly. And Justina mentions this and yeah. her thing, but I always think of where, how is the mall, how am I breathing? Yep. Well, okay. All right, let's hurry up. Uh, yeah. C plot. Snart is green with envy. Okay, so Captain Cold uh, ends up, uh, after being told that he can't rob a bank, steals Rip Hunter's little key to the little jump ship. That I love Jack, how he's that, always stealing stuff. Yeah, off. so he nicks this key. J Jax is um, like tuning it up or something. And so he, they con Captain Cold and Heat Wave con Jefferson uh, Jax mm -hmm. to um, the, to go, you know, like they're going to go to Central City and steal some diamonds, he says. And then they end up stealing what's called a Maximilian Crystal. An emerald. Oh, is it an emerald? Yes. Okay. It's a big ass emerald. Right, right. It is an emerald. And then yeah. the, you find out, though, that they go back to. Um, uh, Cold's like childhood home, mm -hmm. and you find out that um, that Captain Cold wants to change the timeline so that his father doesn't go to prison. Right, because his father went to prison trying to steal this emerald. Right, so he ends up giving this emerald to his father. So he's like, "Here, idiot! Here's the right. emerald, so you right. don't have to go to prison." Right, and then he says, "Don't ever hit them." Right, and he warns him. Yeah, he says, "Otherwise, or I'll be back." Right. So um, now, except my sister yeah. wouldn't be born. Yep. Which and is dumb. Sister, and oh. Yeah, his father's like sister. Yeah. What? He's lucky he didn't erase the whole timeline. Just saying that. But what happens though? Ultimately, we find out that oh, guess what? His dad still goes to prison anyway. Right. Because By trying to, he's trying to fence, fence it. it. Yeah. Like an idiot. Yeah. So just for a totally different reason. His dad is just a moron. Yeah, so, the moral so of that's a big fail for Captain Cold. Yeah. So yeah. with all this, uh, now they find out that Vandal Savage is now like, they're going to try and hook up and take him out in 1986. Right, the year I graduated high school. And so they, I can't wait for that. Yeah, and then there was my junior year of high school, so yeah. 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 So we're Michael off. Michael Jackson, Madonna. So we're off to the future. Parachute pants. All right, review. Uh, I give it nine calloused hands. Okay. And you gave it? Nine out of ten knife fragments. Yeah, we both so. liked it. And I have a couple little things, if it's okay. Okay. Uh, I like the Easter eggs to Batman, Superman. There was a Jonah Hex wanted poster in the background. Right. Another Titanic reference for Vic Garber, which is apparently going to be a running gag. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, Ray was engaged to Moira Queen, her lawyer's daughter. Oh, yeah, Jean Loring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in the logo of Legends of Tomorrow, I don't know if you noticed, but when they turn, they're all the other people's logos. They turn into the letters. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. So I wanted to mention that. I just noticed that, and I thought it was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, 
I do have feedback. Okay. Um, and Justina um, has that same knit about Ray with the okay. liquid. <laughs> but, and she knows she made a mistake about Leonard. So I just wanted to mention that right up front. Okay. Let's hear so, from Justina. Hi, Karen and Charles. Another super week for Superhero TV. Here we go. Supergirl gets 8 out of 10 doppelgangers that sound like Cookie Monster. I really, really liked that Bizarro and Supergirl were similar, but yet mirrors of each other. The fire-breathing scene was my favorite. I'm not too upset about the Adam Carr relationship not working out, because I think they're a good match together, but I got enough shipper drama on my other shows. I'd be okay if Kara was just Supergirl for a little while. The end of the episode reminded me of a horror movie. I was like, oh no, look out behind you. Look up. Don't touch that. Ah! Lucifer's a cool show. I'm really enjoying it. This week, my favorite scene was with the street evangelist guy. That was hilarious. I really want more mythos. I'm not as interested in the case of the week. I'm more interested in the mythology. So I hope that we get more mythology as we go along. I like the family theming on Flash, and I thought it was cool that in an episode where they're talking about the Flash slowing down some, they went up against a tar monster, and tar is very sticky and definitely would make you slow down. <laughs> I'm happy that Barry is having some mercy on Wells from Earth 2, because a lot of the things that he's doing is obviously motivated by the loss of his daughter. And this move is going to take the show to Earth 2, which is very exciting and awesome. Okay, so I didn't love the brain of the week on iZombie, but I did love that we got some plot development. And did Peyton sleep with Blaine, or did I get that wrong? And if she did, I think that the zombie virus could have been transferred to her. And when the cure reverts itself and the zombie virus is reactivated, that maybe Peyton will be at risk too, mm -hmm. because now she has dormant zombie virus inside of her. Definitely. Carter, I love the mirroring between Whitney Frost and Peggy Carter and how they both dealt with women's roles in the time in which they live. Arrow gets 10 out of 10 deadly peppers. I am so happy that Nyssa is back. I was glad to see Roy. When Malcolm Merlin is in his parent role, he really seems to be a different character. He's not as self-serving when it comes to his children. I'm really happy that Felicity gained more confidence in this episode, despite what the board member did, which is something that I've experienced in real life. So I was pretty mad about that, but I'm glad that in the end, Felicity got more confident. And Felicity's dad is a bad guy? Dun, dun, dun! I never would have thought that. <laughs> so Dark said he would leave Oliver alone. But what if the calculator is working for Dark? And the calculator finds a way to take down the city. And Oliver is not able to save the city. And it comes out that the Green Arrow is Oliver Queen. So therefore, due to his failure, he does not get elected mayor. And Star City has Mrs. Dark as a mayor. This could be awful. Plus, I don't think the calculator is going to leave Oliver alone. Because he's going to hate Oliver for putting his daughter in harm's way. Legends of Tomorrow gets 9 out of 10 emeralds. I'm still loving this show. I love that even though Leonard Snart is a criminal, he took the time to go to his house in 1975 and change the timeline so that himself and his sister would have a better childhood. Well, and he that he tried. Yeah, she said she knew she got that wrong. Yeah. Too much. Sarah Lance is an awesome fighter. And I'm glad that they're still showing that she's having bloodlust problems and they didn't just drop that part of the storyline when she changed shows. And I have two science-y, hand-wavy, nitpick type things. One, when the atom came out of an artery, why wasn't he even the slightest bit wet? I didn't see one flash right? of blood on him anywhere. <laughs> and when they were doing the ritual on Carter and they were drinking his blood, I was just like... Blood is not going to flow out of a dead body like that. Hi, okay, <laughs> superhero hand wavy. I can handle it. Have a super week. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And she said, I know. Yeah. I for I got that wrong that Leonard didn't yeah. actually change things. But that's, that's OK. Yeah, that's what I said. Right. I'll do a caveat. So if you want to be like Justina and send us your feedback, we are at Fandom Zonecast on the Twitter machine. 
uh, at facebook.com forward slash fandom zone podcast. And we got two new likes this week. Yes. Thank you for everybody who's given us likes on Facebook. And I hope we get some more because that would be great. That is correct. And uh, also give us a little uh, love on the Twitter. Please do. And uh, our email is fandomzonecast at gmail.com. And you can find me at Elevaria on the Twitter machine. And there is a link there to my bio where you can find my blog and everything's on my blog. And of course, I'm at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter, at Charles Skaggs on the Instagram, Google Plus for all you crazy kids on the Google Plus. (laughs) Shout out to you, Karen. And uh, uh, Facebook, of course, and uh, Damn Good Coffee and Hot, my blog of geeky things where I talk about all these comic book shows and more. And hot coffee. And, well, not so much. We don't talk you don't about talk about coffee. I don't know how to talk about coffee. It's just a Twin Peaks reference. I'll have to come on I, there. I need to, we need to, like, I need to give you the audio so we can do Damn Good Coffee. The actual quote. Yeah. Then, you do. That could be fun. Damn Good Coffee and hot. All right. So as we hit the two hour mark. Diane. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Her name's Diane, Her right? Name's, name is Diane. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Damn good coffee, Diane. Yep. So, uh, so I think that's probably you've listened to us enough. You need yeah. Go out and well, go we out. We hit everything, though. What? We hit everything. I know we had seven shows. So the bad and the good. Yep. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully, we we have another uh, nice, exhausting week ahead of us. That's right. So, uh, so you better get your sleep and get, eat your vitamins and all that. Cause, That's right. Uh, rest up, because we got a lot to cover. And I'm heading out with my new favorite song. <laughs> I Bye. really love this song. Bye, everyone. He said that-